day. It was beautiful, really. Oh, it was beautiful. This was like, you know, I don't know if the Levista said a little. You know, Serbian is coming easier than the English form. Read something. Oh, uh, I don't know if you felt it, but it was like, like heaven. Really beautiful. Good oh, it down. No, today it was much better than. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was a really beautiful work today and even yesterday and, and since we came. It's like really thank you, thank you, Dorka and uh, really Esther and Eva. Wow. I would even buy you ice cream, but we didn't have time. So if one of you finish, we go. You know. So, but really thank you. That's my thank you. And. Uh, Shortly uh, before we hear from Pastor Magnus, there is this story in Matthew chapter 25. So God speak to us, you know, keep our ears and hearts open. We want to hear from you. Thank you for your word. That it's not just our opinions, but this is the word that you have given us. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Bless this time. Amen. Pray. So, Matthew chapter 25, verse 24 and 25. You know, the context is that that uh, uh, there is this, they call it a husbandman or worker or owner, owner of the land. And he gave the talents to people. Verse 24 is very interesting. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you that you are a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not strewed. So, all what? Where have you not labored? And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the earth. I mean, look, here is your talent. So this is this is uh, very important to understand. What does he says here? He says, I knew that you are a hard master. You see, he knew something. He had some idea we could say like preconceived idea you know some knowledge about the master and this is how he saw his master if i know or i think i know that he is hard master you know my thinking about god will influence my behavior because he said i knew you are hard and i was afraid Therefore, I did nothing. It's interesting, you know, how we think about God. It influences our actions. And it can throw us into passivity. Because we are afraid we can make a mistake and he's so hard. So it's better to do nothing because, you know, he does nothing, makes no mistakes, right? So let's be careful about what we know about God. Let's be rather open to God that He can reveal Himself to us. Because what do we know about God? Well, my friend says that, or I was reading in a book, which was written by George MacArthur, you know, and, and he says, and you have like gazillions of books and authors, you know, with wrong ideas about God. But what about about reading the scripture and letting God speak to you. And then you will say, well, I thought you are like this, but you are different. Thank you, God. Now I am free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You know, when we learn about God, the real truth, it will set us free. 
thinking with God, that's one of the booklets or teachings from Pastor Stevens, thinking with God. Because we can think something about God, I have my thoughts about God, or I can think with God. Is it my thoughts about God? Is it somebody else's thoughts about God? Or am I thinking with God? We need to hear from the Lord. Maybe it, it, it happened to you, you know, like somebody comes to you and you say, you know this person? You should, first, in the first place, we should not give our ear to this talking. But let's say, you know, for the sake of explanation, you know, they, they tell you something about that person. Then you see him that way. Because you've heard it. And you know, and then that's how you see him. But then the person comes, you're like, you know, because you know already. But then you learn he is different. Wow, it was not true. My thinking, my knowing about the person was wrong. Why did I even listen to this evil message? That's what happened in Genesis, you know, the devil talked about God. You don't know that he's not like this, he's different. Now, and by the way, when you eat, you will know, I promise I'm the devil. You know, what do we know about God? So let's be careful about things we know about God, because we may be pretty wrong. And if we know it the wrong way, then we will maybe do nothing. Instead of letting God reveal himself, the same way like in the book of Job, you know, God speaks to Job and, and he reveals him that the things are different. You know, let's never hold on these preconceived ideas that we've heard from somebody. You know, let God speak to us. Let him reveal who he is to us, not what somebody says. And I don't mean somebody. You know, the man in, in, a, in a position uh, who speaks uh, for God, from God, from the scripture, or spiritual friend, you know, uh, have a spiritual friend. Not the friend that you like. Do you know the friendship between David and Jonathan? It's a very painful friendship, kind of. Because Jonathan is the inheritor of the kingdom. But he sees that David is the one. And he gives him his coat, his sword. He hands it over to him. And their friendship was God given, not man chosen. You know, like usually I come to church. We'll, we'll be friends, you know. We have, we have cool t shirt and we, we will be good friends. You know? No, no, no. Let's, let's have a God given. By the way, Jonathan's heart was burning when, when the David was telling the testimony how God defeated Goliath. When David was preaching about his great God and he was elevating God, Jonathan's heart was knit together in the moment. You know, have a friend who speaks about greatness of God. Have a friend who truly reveals God. You know, your heart will be knit to him, not because he's cool, but because he speaks for God. This is amazing. You now I want to learn who God is. I'm coming here today like I know nothing. I don't want to be familiar. I know it, I know it, I know God who you are. That's why I did nothing because I was afraid. No, I want to be like why we are coming. So listening from God, you see, it's also important how we listen. Do I know it already or, or am I open? I teach you. I teach you. I teach me God. So teach us God today. This is why we are here. We want to hear from you. We want to see you in, in, in a true light. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. And now let's 
Volcom. Uh, I know you, you are used to uh, Mr. Bendigus, but this morning Pastor Magnus will speak to us, and he will speak in oh. Swedish. Right? Yes. Yes. Yes, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I will translate it to Serbian. Yeah. So. So you have two chances, either Swedish or Serbian, you can choose. So please, Pastor Marcus, and we love you, but thank you for really serving us this way. Yeah, we still love you. We will love you. Does anyone know Michael Lewis, Michael Evans? He, he's now not watching because he's dead now. He's in heaven, so he, he will not complain later. Michael Lewis, you know Michael Lewis? He was part of the church in Sweden um, for many years. He was actually on La Gracia, the uh, mission of the mission ship uh, in the 1980s. He um, was awesome with all these amazing people. Pastor John Boyce was here also, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Remember, uh, Pastor John, I had to travel around Sweden to find these ridiculous parts to be able to
Yes, that's what I want to hear. And she's always saying, honey, but we are serious. You know? Yeah, we are. My, not my dream, but my plan is to sit down with Kim Jong-un. <laughs> two, people, two people I want to meet, Jesus, uh, is Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un, two opposites. I will just have coffee with them. I'm open for an invitation, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife, my wife went and works at a very well-known hotel. You stayed there, yeah. and she, she she was the person that takes care of the famous guests. So Dalai Lama was there. All the bad stuff. So I said, if Donald Trump comes, you have to smuggle me through the garbage or something like that, because I want to come and uh, uh, have coffee with him. Tell him a few. <laughs> no, I love him. Okay, I'm talking about I, I'm one of the few people who like him this week. Maybe I'm the only great person. Uh, okay, <laughs> the message. Father, thank you so much for Svalbard. We pray for Svalbard. Uh, polar bears. Missions conference there. That would be so exciting. Maybe it would just be for fun, but it would also, you never know. 2,000 people in the country. But, uh, and then holders. And uh, just uh, bless them there. Let there be a church there. Let people come to Christ in small part. Uh, let people come to Christ in North Korea.
joy and gladness shall be found here at the thanksgiving and the voice of melody. <coughs> but the, the phrase here I want to use uh, share from is waste places. Um, and there's another verse, the next chapter in verse 9. Break forth, shout joyfully together, you waste places of Jerusalem. Oh, that's my fault. Uh, for, the, uh, for the Lord has comforted his people, he has redeemed Jerusalem. So these two phrases here, these two verses, where it talks about waste places. We all, we have the times things which are places and we make say that they are waste places. We have uh, things that happen. There are some verses here which I, I might not read, I might read, but that there are um, places in our lives, like we mentioned, that we might see we might see as something negative. Like we remember is it was Genesis chapter. Where it says that God turns a curse into a blessing. Or as something negative into a blessing in our lives. For our lives and for other people's lives. We'll we get into that later. Um, and now we're going to sort of remember these two verses. And then we're going to talk about something very interesting. <coughs> and it's like, I think the kids were here. David is not here. I think we Yesterday, when we were at the cafe, you were playing with the tree. Remember that? You had a stick, you were playing, doing something with the tree. What was that? Was that a worm? What was that? A spider. A spider. Uh -huh. okay. I thought it was a worm, but a spider. That's my sister, my, 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 my daughter, would have, she's very much afraid of spiders. It's Christian, it's not. Oh, he's a brother. It's a perfect match. Perfect match. And, yeah. and, you know, and I tell him, this one, this is created by God. He eats, he eats, he eats. also needs to live and enjoy life and eat them. To eat some of them. Huh? And eat some of them. And eat some of them. Eat something you say to somebody. And we have a snake in the house, she thought. But you know these leeches, are, uh, we call them murder snake now. They're like snails, but they're called, they're black. After it rains, they come out and eat. No? Black snake. She thought it was because in the morning, because in the house it's green, if you have a cell, you have small windows. And, ah, my mind, oh! Or she tells me, we have a snake. And the snake comes up, just took it, threw it out. But she's very much afraid of these things. And I have to go save her sometimes. Get it! Day more, I was talking. Uh, it's fine, it's fine. We used to, when we were kids, when I was a kid, I used to play with sport groups. It was a lot of fun. That part of my seat, but it was a lot of fun. I was, I, was, I, I was a very good child, but I used to say that, but I also was a bad child. Yeah. Had fun. No, we took, we took the sport picks and we put them under a glass jar. Yeah, we took a small Everyone's serious now. No, it was fun. It was fun. It was actually yeah, so cool. I think. got recharged. Huh? He got recharged. We got recharged. He scored me. We got recharged. But he got a piece of advice now. But it was a lot of fun. Okay, from one thing to another. Worms. Um, when we go fishing, we use worms. Um, but this is a, we mentioned it, another type of worm. Right? <coughs> The fishing worm, and you know, the worm that goes on the you know, same soil. But another type, and let, let, let's type. Now let's turn to Psalm 22. Um, and then Isaiah 41. So those two passages. <coughs> and we, we have heard many of us. Um, messages from these verses, and, but everything's true and we, you know, we can share it uh, from another angle, another aspect. But uh, Pastor Stevens has preached, and probably we have all three of us that preach from it. But let's read, let's read. 
Now this is also about Jesus when he's on the cross. Uh, chapter 22 of Psalms, verse 1. It says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Perhaps we sometimes say that. Or we have all, I think we all have said it. Maybe I'm the only one. I think all of us have said something similar. Not that, but maybe similar. And why aren't thou so far from helping me? That we, we have said. Maybe. And from the words of my Lord. That's the uh, prayer. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. In the night season, and I am, and I am not silent. It's pray. Application to us, Jesus, but application to us. But thou art holy, O thou, o thou that inhabits the praises of Israel. This is a good verse, actually, for Psalm service. Because it's thou inhabits the praises of Israel. You know, when we have Psalm service, it's not just good. Psalm service, we have at least two or one or five songs or four. It's important. It's a great ministry. It's a very needed ministry. I mean, David had a choir of 400. And we read in the Bible about music, it's, it's very important to God and to us. It's a good preparation when we are going to hear the Word of God. Usually, like in Sweden, we have three types of songs. We have the lively songs. You know, people are conscious about, hey, what did you do today? What are you going to do after church? And, you know, the price of bread has risen. You know, people are self-conscious. And we have the music, so kind of clap, every, clap the demons away and, you know, yeah. Uh, and then we have more calmer, and then we have the worshipers like we had today. We had Isa after all, and uh, Jesus, name of all names, <coughs> sing hallelujah. We have this amazing worship song, just like you said. Just open. So, so we we sort of said we in a sense become God conscious instead of self conscious. Some music now happens. The praises of greater grace, you know, the praises of the believer, the worship of the believer. Uh, so music is so important, really, it really prepares the way, so to speak. And sometimes people are healed just in the song songs. So never, never, never think, well, now we have, never come late. You know, sometimes, like I mentioned the other day, the people plan to come after the song service when I'm sitting there when I'm being self righteous I said, I have my chair. Thank God I'm not like other people. If somebody came later, it's not referring to you, but but you know, the song I love the song service so important to come on time. And uh, it, even if it, there's no song service, so important to come on time. You know, uh, uh, South America and Brazil, they always come one hour later, one and a half, one and a half hour later. Pastor Stan and Pastor Cliff and the different ones had to kind of like train them to come on to because you want to miss them. It's part of the message. Thou inhabits the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. And here, uh, is the key verse. But I am a... Now don't look at your Bible. That's why I do this. Warm. 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 Sometimes when we do this, Johanna, come on, you know. And, you know, just uh, see if, if we would remember uh, what it says. But I am a worm. I am a worm. That's not a I mean, Jesus. It's about Jesus. But I am a worm. None of us love it like the worms. It's used for fishing, it's used for different things. Uh, they're in the ground. They have a function. They have an important function in nature, I guess. I haven't done any research, but they have an important function. But I am a worm. No man, a reproach of man. I mean, we, we, I think so. I say, uh, no, 53, right? Uh, uh, but he's a reproach. He was not well loved. There was nothing about Jesus Christ that would draw people to him. He did not have perhaps a great charisma, but he had this, like we showed the other day, he had the, the authority of the Lord of God. He, he had this grace. People looked into his eyes. There's something about this man, or teacher, master. There's something about him, how he 
loves me, that there's something that people were, so to speak, drawn to him, to the message, to 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 love. But he, and he is like a reproach of all that, and despised by the people. Many people despised him, as just like sometimes people are not happy about us. You know, and that's, I think that's part of life, being a Christian. We're not always loved. Sometimes, you know, sometimes we are loved. My workplace, they, they had a, was me and another pastor worked also. And all the people you know, smoke and they talk, you know, sensual talk, and they complain about the boss. You know, and now we have two pastors in there. And we have to be careful with what we say. Good that there's a, you know, a few pastors, a few Christians in the workplace. People might be careful with all the curse words and stuff. But anyway, so uh, we're not always loved, despised of the people. All they that see me laugh at me to scorn. They shoot out with the lip. They shake their head. Uh, but the point is, I am the worm. And this for this was referring to it the, the worm. Uh, in the Old Testament, the, the female worm was crushed. The gist of Jesus Christ was crushed. So it was crushed, and out of that, what it had been crushed out of that was produced a red dye. Dye, what do they call it? Dye, dye. And it was used to, to, to color the clothes, specifically the priest's clothes, to make, you know, to make it red. And people use that nowadays to, to, to color, not the snake or the what, but to color, you know, garden. To color garden. To make sweaters. And, and of course closed, but this this worm here, um, when it's crushed, it produces something amazing. Something you know, beautiful color. And we're gonna talk about another person here soon. But this is speaking about Jesus. Um it produces red dye. And I don't know why it's from the females, but it's not from the males. You know that? From the female worm, not the men. I don't know what the male worm was produced there. But. So, and, and <coughs> the worm may seem insignificant. It's so small, it's not important. But it is used. We call it a, and it was used here to kind of speak about Jesus Christ <coughs> and to dye the, the, the clothes. And this is something which is very insignificant. Uh, you hardly see. And we mentioned yesterday the, the bush where God spoke to Moses. Right? Now where does God speak to us? How, when does he speak to us? And something which is totally dead. There's no life in these bushes. It's dry. Uh, there's no life. It's just worth nothing. An Adam tree in the desert or a well or a coconut tree is worth something. But this bush, nobody would even think of it. But that's where God speaks. Uh, that's where the presence of God is. That's where God speaks. And in an uh, insignificant time, uh, so the, uh, the uh, bush may seem very insignificant, but nothing is insignificant in our lives. Uh, like I said, He speaks anytime and anywhere. But we can we kind of expect, like when we pray, that there will be this amazing answer, a great revelation. That I prayed and God would write the answer on the wall. I should go to China or Svalbard. I know it's not this is it's written on the wall. So that way up if that wasn't the Bible. Or I would get an email from Pastor Shalith. God told me that you would I no, God doesn't answer like that always. I have never received anything more. We had this lady. No, we had this lady. But there was a church before it all. A, a, a Coca-Cola, you know, on the street, Coca-Cola camp blew her away, so she saw that as a sign from God. Can I see? And oh, it's the wind and every Coca-Cola bottle that flew is not a sign from God. But she was also a bit unusual. But, um, but God answers prayer his way. And it's his time. So let's let's talk about uh, another man here. 
was also called a word to Jesus. He's called, he mentioned as a word here, he says, I am a word. There's another man in the Bible, a word, who is in a sense also had done something worthless. Uh, actually, there's a very good verse, I think it's Numbers 23, 21. I'll find it uh, later. But, and we talked about who? We talked about Jacob. And how in Jacob, uh, Isaiah 41, if we have, if you want to turn to Isaiah 41.
and sometimes that happens. Hopefully, not too often. But chastisement, and I, uh, I will mention the verse here. Uh, an amazing verse. And we can do it now. Uh, Psalm 119. This is, this is a very strange statement, very odd statement, uh, maybe not so odd, but it's, uh, it's a statement that we might not hear, we might not say. It is good, it is good, it is a song, it is, it is, it is well with my It is well with my soul. What's in the title of that song? It is well with my soul. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. One of these old hymns. In the, you said it about the other day. You like the old hymns. Some of these old hymns are really, really, really. I mean, the lyrics. Then you have these modern songs, you know. I think about you at night as you love, you know. Yeah. Hello. That could be anything. That could be my heart. That could be my, you know. Whatever, I mean, it's like, but they want to cater to two different groups, to Christians and to non Christians, and they can have more money. I don't want to cater to anybody. It's like you mentioned that we, we preach the Word of God in and out of season. We preach the truth. The truth. We don't preach a lie, we don't preach opinion. We mentioned that also the other. I'm not interested in sharing my opinion because it might be stimulating. You know, what's your opinion about this? What's your opinion about politics. It may be fun for a moment to talk about it, but I'm more interested in saying, you know, what, what does God say? Because what he says is powerful. What he says is real. That's the only thing that really matters. That I can trust, that I can take to heart. When someone shares, well, I believe this. And I can't take it to heart because I, I don't really trust them. You know, because you, you, you got it from you. You got it from, you know, we talked about it before about the other. talked about that. There, there's so many things out there. That's why we're careful with what we hear. We're careful with what we listen to. Who we listen to. You know, we choose our friends carefully. Right? We're not, we don't, we're not analytical. We don't, we're not paranoid. But we choose the ones who surround us, that they edify us. And that's what we see in the body of Christ. You know, we're, we're, we, we need to be in the body of Christ and where we can be edified. We can be ministered to. Where we can be served, and where we can serve. It's not just, well, I go to church so they can serve me, but also I go to church to serve. To serve, after to serve, different ones of church, the music, and that's a great way to live. You know, we go to church to be trained, but also to serve. Learn what it is to be. I love always the things that we mentioned before, uh, before the meeting. So to read the Gospels, how did Jesus live? What was his mind? How did he approach people? How did you deal with uh, people who might be you know, let's speak against the nature of this father? Uh, you know, the scribes and the Pharisees. He wasn't too kind to them. You know. Whoa, you know, and the temple. You know, we can learn things like that. But just how did he approach? What was his message? How did he communicate that message? What was his heart? I love the the, 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 the parable of the prodigal son. Right. That's a that's an amazing revelation of the heart of God, the heart of the Father. It's amazing to, to just read the Bible again, just to read, to sit down and read. Without the expansion, the writing of books, there is no end. Well, there's a million books. You go to see the Euro Expression. There's so many books, and I look at these titles, totally unnecessary. Why did you write <laughs> Well, i got to make a living. There's so many. No, I'm okay. I take that back. <laughs> I think I made a mess of my I will never be invited to that come in. Here. <laughs> you see some names again. No. <laughs> <laughs> but they're unnecessary ones and there was a uh, you know. My life with myself. Myself and Jesus. Uh, so funny these guys would come to church sometimes. They give a testimony two hours. 
I was such a wicked sinner, and I, I was on drugs. I drank alcohol, and I lied, and I stole, and I came out for one hour. And then, and then I received Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for coming. Yeah. And it's like, that's not the message. You know, uh, yeah, uh, the Bible and Pastor Ben, uh, that's books. And Pastor Tate's And theological and Pastor Stevens. Uh, so there are, but there's so many, so many books which are very good. People need to make them living. I would like to write a book, but I, I have no idea. I started with one paragraph, I have no idea. My wife was going to actually write a book or a devotional for ladies. Uh, what was it? What was it? Devotions. Okay, thoughts from a past wife. But it never got there. She, she actually wrote like four or five, but they were actually pretty good. Four or five days. I can read those every day. I'm done with one, I, I start the other one. <laughs> Just so we can make a living. What's wrong with that? No, not really. Okay, I'll just go back to um, it. It was good. It was good. Yeah. It was good. It's that I had been afraid. That was not that gives back to it. It was good for me. I may learn thy statutes. That's a really amazing lesson. He would say that it was good for me that I was, you know, the uh, first few books, the first chapters of the Bible. Um, I can't just turn, I can just scroll up here. I love my iPads. <coughs> like, the, you know, when God created, when God created the different days, every day he said something. God saw the light that it was good. Of course it's got to be good. I mean, this is something that God did. He called the seeds in verse, uh, verse 10. It was good. And then uh, the fruit of the seed and after its kind, God saw that it was good. So many times it was good. Uh, over and over again, God saw that it was good. God saw that it was good. And God saw that it was good. Whatever God does in my life is for my need, my benefit. And in 2 Samuel 22, verse 31, it's even better. It gets better and better. As for God, his way is perfect. The suffering, the waste paper. You know, when I'm like a bush, the waste paper, I, I remind myself of this. All his ways are perfect. It's perfect. Suffering of my life is perfect. It's doing something we, 2 Corinthians 4, uh, Romans 8, it works for us an eternal weight of life. Right? An eternal weight of life. Whenever I'm afflicted, he, he says, it was good for me that I was afflicted, that I might live against the And I, you know, I know, I know, you know, sometimes I pray because of the, time, the times we live in. Interesting. Oh. Yeah, yeah it, I think it was 97, 95, 96 when the Estonia disaster the world. So we were we were, you know, you know, the prayers we were praying that we were a catastrophe, you know, something would happen this week. And then later Estonia sank. And you know, in Estonia they in, in the boat in the boat, the Passenger, you know, was a Christian group. And the you know, survivors were saying that as as this happened, and as they were going down, they were a young Christian, they were sharing the gospel. As they were, you know, they were in the port where saw the street. They asked, can we use the street? And they were sharing the gospel as they were sinking. And they all died. And, <clears throat> and the next day, uh, the newspaper says, how many people died? Seven. So, you know, interpret it any way we can. Like, uh, that was so amazing at the time. You know, we prayed these nice, I, I pray that God would just bring uh, the waste place to sleep. And that's a strange thing to pray, but I, I pray it. I, I, we live a good life, and we live a good life.
life here in Hungary, buying camp. You know, our hearts are the people who are saved, who are born again. That's the most important thing. We, we pray that God will shake the countries. But please don't pray that. Please don't. I don't want this to. I pray all the time. I pray every day. Because I want to. I pray in Sweden more. Uh, that God would raise up young, young men uh, to preach the gospel. Raise up many young men to preach the gospel instead of his ministry. No, I'm kidding. No, but to raise up young men to go all, all, all over the street and preach. That's what these young men should do. They should be preachers. They should be pastors. They should be evangelists. Let the bakers bake. We need bread. We need bread. Here. Mm -hmm. We need bread. Let, wow. the, you know, let, let the electricians do it. We are called to, to preach, to share the gospel. You know, let, let the bus driver, let, let the unbelievers do the unbelieving stuff. And us Christians go all the way with them. Preach, love people, do this music ministry. We are here for such a short time. I'm 59. I look 20 now. But I've been in this church since 1983. We've seen a lot. We've been in you know. And we get older. And the time is getting close. As soon the rapture will be, or will we, we will be with God. We will be with Jesus in heaven. Let's spend the rest of this time, there 20, 30, 40, 100 years that we have left. Just living. Living for Jesus. Forgetting the world. You know, run the race like Paul says. There's, okay, there's this pizza, there's travel, there's fun, there's the fun jokes before the, the church service. We have fun also. They're not some strange. But let's live for Jesus. Let's go all the way. Why not? What's wrong with that? There are billions of souls. Billions of people. What can we say about that? I'm so happy for the ones I'm, I thank God that the people who shared Christ with me. What if they did? I don't know where. Maybe someone else would. I, I don't know. I thank God. I thank you for the, my, my grandparents. When I received Christ, uh, they told me that we had prayed for you every single day. Every single day. Because their son, my dad, rejected Christ. But we had prayed. And then I received Christ. This was amazing for them. And it's answer to the prince, answer to the people who, who shared the gospel with me. And we want that. There are people like that. Guys, and, you know, women, men who also search all over the place. Seven, eight, nine billion people. They need Jesus, they need Christ. Let's continue him. And all his ways are all his ways are perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. God doesn't make mistakes. So when I go through the suffering, it's, it's perfect. We know. We, we, we rather, I think I, I have it here. Genesis 50 20, I think it was, I was correct. Yeah. For as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it for you. Whatever happens to my life, people do things, they say things, like they mention, they gossip, they do this. Of course, God is not for that. But God can turn anything Anything. But how, what, what is your, I don't understand. What, why are you allowing this? I mean, haven't I? Haven't I? It's been, you know, suffering, I think. It's amazing. And of course, there are times of suffering, but there's times of not suffering. But we know whenever we go, we have a teenager, we don't have that problem here and there at home, that Joseph goes out into the world. I think Pastor Shala, I mean, why? I mean, Pastor Shala is, is Pastor Shala. And it's perfect. Things happen. Uh, our children hopefully go, you know, with God right away. Also, 
they don't, it's not always the case. But then they come back and they become peaceful. And uh, evil against me, but God meant it for good. To bring it what? To pass. God meant it unto good to bring to pass. As, a, as it is this day, to save much people. So maybe I suffer for other people. Maybe it's good that I'm afraid for other people. I can identify, because some of us are in, not so much as we know to talk, some of us are in well, Eastern Europe. We've seen, we've seen a lot. Don't you know, go to the Roman or Roman or Gypsy people who might not have much. Maybe you don't have so much, I don't know, but we've been a, a lot of in Eastern Europe, been with poor people. And I love the Hungarians, I love the Russians and the Kyrgyz. And we mentioned the other day, I think, you know, we have, we, we have an apartment, two bedroom apartment, everyone's sitting down in the kitchen, almost bathroom, the hallway, everybody listening. Just listening. You know, the people have nothing. I remember I think these people in Bishkek in our church there. They came Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday. Uh, and then they worked at night and they made a kiosk or something. But they came to church. They came to Bible Watch. They walked. Oh, that's religion. That's some strange sight. That's what their parents said or, or brothers and sisters. But they were so broken. They had nothing. And they came together. Jesus, God, became everything. That's, what, that's where God wants to bring us. To, to he wants to bring us to that place where we recognize that we need him, that he will become everything. And what, what is wrong with that? I think it's amazing. I want to be in that place. And <laughs> when you pray this, when you pray to it, uh, it will come. But I don't mind it coming. To, because it, this too, what does it say? This too shall pass. Everything is for a season. It will pass. And then there's the time. But the things that we have that go on in our lives, whatever it is, they will pass. And it is, what, what did we do for? It was good for me. Um, just a few more thoughts. Let's start the second cut this time. We mentioned, or I mentioned it, verse 16, specifically verse 17. I think I even shared that I'm hungry. I think I preached for this first. <laughs> and he says here, you know, every, every, every day, we have already talked a little bit about this, but every day something starts in my life. Uh, every day we have new beginnings of something good or something bad. I lose my job, that is, a, that is a beginning of something perhaps not so good. I, I get a job, that's the beginning of something. Something happens, I get, I, I get cancer. That's a bad beginning. But it might also be a good beginning. There also be always beginnings in our lives. Now let's read, it, read here. Wherefore, henceforth, know me, know we, no man after the flesh. Yea, we know, we have known Christ after the flesh. Yet now henceforth we know him no more. Therefore, if any man, if any man is in Christ, is a new creature. This is how Ed found himself. Old things have passed away. Now we get into this. Old things have passed away. Behold. I like the word behold. It's not just and the new things have come. It says behold. The emphasis here is behold. And if you go a little bit into a little bit into the Greek and the ground and all of these things, he says, if I'm going to paraphrase, I'm going to do the amplified Magnus version. Uh, the day, the day of old beginnings are passed away. And the day of new beginnings are become. You see what I mean? So the day, the negative thing that has happened in my life, whether it be in something immoral, maybe, whatever it is, God takes care of it. There's always a new beginning in my life. Salvation is the, is the first new beginning. I get saved, I, I, I'm 
love that you see the Holy Spirit. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and I'm on about eternal security. They, over 100 points of uh, our identity present all truths. But the things, we, the baggage that we will have, it's amazing how God delivers them. I, I, I shared with this lady in Kurjak in Russia. I mentioned her time before. And I, I knew the Holy Spirit told me, or whatever, you know, it's something, discern, I think, discern, I don't like that word, now, that she was involved in the occult. I just knew it. So I just went up to her, why are you involved in the occult? How did you know that? And I said, the Holy Spirit, you know, somehow I said something. I, I knew it. And she started to share and share, and she, I saw the darkness in her face. I, I, you know, as soon as she closed. And then the next day, she came to church, uh, to our meetings. She looked brand new. Her shoulders were off. New clothes, you know, light, lighter clothes. Dark paint, or, you know, what do you call it? But she was a brand new preacher. She was happy, she was fine. Jesus came into her life. And it's like, wow, the, God has so many people out there. She became a new, but the day of new, that was her, the day before was the day of new beginnings. She, she gave, opened the door to, the, to Satan somehow, some years ago, prior to that. And of course, she came in and things happened. But this, that was over. The past is gone. And she, I don't know what she's doing now, but this was a, uh, I think I mentioned the other day also about the, uh, the guy in the same place uh, that was emotionally damaged. The pastor's son had lost. The pastor who said that his son was lost to salvation. And he, he was crying in the hallway. But what I understood, because a month later, she was in her, uh, she wrote an article in the newspaper, and I did you know, some kind of interview. She told me a few days later. He's totally changed. Because he heard the message of acceptance. I mean, you know, he was finally, he was loved. I said, no, because you know, he heard, you have not, not lost your sandwich, it's impossible. And whatever has happened in your life, whatever has been said, God has a new beginning for you. He has a new beginning for you. And so she told me that, he was totally choice. He was still, didn't really want to meet, but this is what God does. Starts new miracles in our lives. So every message is a new beginning. We, 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 we go to church, we actually heard so many messages, but every message does something new. I grow. I grow my relationship with the Word of God. My relationship with God. I hear, I hear a, a something. God is like pinpointing something in my life. He's changing me. He's loving me. I get healed, whatever that means. He calls me into the mission field. And just the fact that I, I continually hear that He loves me. That's a new beginning because there's a healing process. Every time I hear the word of God, uh, you know, every message, even a harder message, should always be preached on a, on, a, on a grace platform. Every message should be on a grace platform. Otherwise, it's, not, it's a wrong message. So I tell you, it's like I'm not a pastor who preach maybe uh, a series on grace, and then he maybe brought in a, a more serious uh, message. But grace, and in a message, you have to, there has to be grace. Otherwise, people leave with the burden, and they should not leave the church with the burden. That's what happens in churches sometimes. They leave, there's a he more, there's, they, they're heavier when they leave the church in the morning than when they came. That's a terrible thing. That should never happen. But there are, you know, we went up to this church the other day. Hello. It was black, and it was dark, and it was depressing. We were kicked out of the church to, to be cold. The selfie. We did take a selfie. Yeah. We did take You cannot do that. It happened also in Russia. And, you know, who cares? Uh, shorts, maybe if we have a uh, robe with the priest, we could. But uh, legalism, law, the appeal, when Jesus said, I mean, uh, was it Matthew 11? 28 to 30, right? He, he wants to take the burdens off. That is our job. I mean, that is our calling to minister a gospel that will take away the burdens. That has to be done. Yeah. He says, come unto me, all you who are burdened and heavy laden. Not everybody.
everybody is correct. Like I think I mentioned the other day, that it's like going to an exchange office. I give them, you know, my dollars every week for the exchange office or whatever. Uh, there's, a, there's an exchange. He takes the burden, he carries them forward. That's the message we have. Uh, this, the, the, uh, people like I said should not be in the church heavier than they can. The point is the burden should be taken away. So there's a new process, there's a new beginning, new healing every single time we hear the word of God. And I think that's maybe, uh, maybe enough, I don't know what the time is, but God brings us out of things in our lives. The past. The past sometimes haunts people. That's why they come for counseling and counseling the same things over and over again. You know, it, it, it haunts them. But it doesn't have to be that way. Let Jesus take it. Let him take the past. He has to be. Make him be a new creature. And if you're not a born again, he, will, he wants to give you a new life. Make you a new creature. Have a new beginning. New day, new birth, day, new beginning, and everything is gone. He has forgiven every, every, every sin. There's one rejecting salvation, rejecting the Holy Spirit. Yes, but don't do that. Receive it. Everything else is forgiven. It's like you're forgiven. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. I, I something happened. I'm, <clears throat> I'm forgiven. It's finished. He did it. I don't have to live with, oh, I sinned again, oh, woe unto me. I don't have to live that way. Yes, you know, there should be, you know, remorse or whatever you want to use to repent. There should be that. Uh, but I don't have to hit myself with ashes on my head. Because it is finished. I'm loved. So we don't live in the past. We live what God does, how he wants to speak to us today. Because that's when the healing comes. And we can't have many things we want to say you know, we just want to, as I see it's late here, but, but perhaps someone is watching for the first time. You know, you never know who's watching on the internet uh, today or later, a year from now. You know, YouTube, the messages are there for years. Maybe you have never received Christ. Maybe you have never received Christ. Maybe you've gone to church and you've done everything. Been, been baptized and you know uh, you've done your job so to speak and you're hoping you're wishing that you'd be accepted for you. God loves you so much. Uh, he wants to give you eternal life. He wants to give you the most precious gift that there is to God. And that is salvation as a gift. If you want to pray, if you're watching, if you want to ask, if you want to receive eternal life, if you want to just, if you want to new again in your life from today on, it's possible. It's for you. So you can pray in your heart. If you want to accept it, pray in your heart. Pray in your mind. Pray inside. And just, or maybe repeat the words I say. Lord, I just, I've heard the message. I want to go to heaven. I don't want to live in fear. I have many waste places. I have many curses. I have many things in my life. I have all things that's happened to me. I was I was molested. I was this and I was I, I just I am living not a good life. Oh how I you know I, I, I want to come to you, Jesus, today. And I, I I'm thankful that you accept me for you. I want to receive you in my life. Come in and make my life brand new. Come in. And come to me. Just save me this moment. And so I ask you into my life, into my heart, to save me right now. And I ask you, and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And I pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. And if you did that, I can say congratulations. Uh, best, day, best day of your life, actually. Best day of your life. This is so good. You know, if you're living here in Serbia, wherever you live, just contact Pastor Thomas. You, uh, 
with respect to watching YouTube, there's an address, there's an email, there's a phone. Just do it immediately. So you can be encouraged, you can have coffee, just Pastor Tomash was a pastor in Belarus, just or wherever, just contact. Just reach out and you will be loved. No pressure. And come. Come to the church. Come to the body. Come to where the other people like you are also, also be seen.